Perfect. All right, bullets versus a car windshield. So I know the thumbnail was me aiming a 500 Magnum at my truck windshield, but uh, that's just a better thumbnail. YouTube doesn't pay me enough money yet to do videos like that. So how about this? When we hit 1 million subscribers here on the channel, I will blow the windshield out of my truck with a 50 BMG and film the video for you guys to see there. It's on the record, so I guess I gotta do it. But today, uh, that's definitely not what we're gonna do. So I actually got this windshield from the scrapyard. I'll go ahead and show it to you guys up close. Um, and this is a humongous windshield, you can see. I don't know if the camera's showing you, but it is humongous. Uh, it's from a big Dodge truck, and it's in absolutely perfect condition. Surprisingly thin, I've never, handled a windshield out of a vehicle before and I just expected it to be a lot thicker. You can actually kind of bend it and flex it if you try and I assume that that is the technology that they put in these things to make them shatterproof and stuff like that. But we've all seen tons of police body cam videos and other videos on the internet of guns being shot through windshields and we know that most calibers will easily make it through a car windshield but today I want to see what happens on the other side of that windshield when you shoot different bullets through a car windshield. So on the backside of it, we have a 10% ballistics gel block. It's a pretty much brand new block. Um, and as always, I wanna thank Clear Ballistics for providing the ballistics gel that we're gonna use today. I really appreciate that. And since we are kinda limited on ballistics gel and windshield real estate, we're just gonna do pistols today. Um, and then maybe down the road, we'll do another video on rifles and different calibers and stuff like that. But today I wanna shoot one round, maybe two, uh, out of each handgun caliber and see how it reacts on the other side after going through a car windshield. Let's do it. So I was gonna start with the 380. I brought the ammo and left the gun back at the house. So we're gonna start with the nine millimeter instead. Now I know everyone is gonna want me to test their ammo that they carry or the ammo that they use. Every time I do one of these gel tests like this, I get a bunch of comments asking me to test different kinds of ammo. The truth is, I can't test them all. There's only so much space in the gel and we only have so much time in the video and I wanna do different calibers. So for the nine millimeter, we're gonna test the 135 grain Hydroshock Deep. This is a really good round. I've tested it several times on the channel, but it's been a while since we shot this one. So Hydroshock Deep, nine millimeter versus a car windshield. Let's see what it does. A little bit more spider webbing than I expected. So there's our entrance hole on the front of the windshield. You can see a pretty good spider web around that bullet hole. And then on the back side here, you can see into our ballistics shell. So it looks like that bullet completely stayed intact. Looking at the tape measure, it penetrated about 10 inches into our ballistics shell. So definitely not too bad there. And only had one little piece break off of that bullet. The rest of it stayed completely intact and you can see it stopped right there at 10 inches. So I realized that I could do this from either side of the windshield, depending on what situation you're trying to simulate, whether it's firing from inside of the vehicle to the outside or from the outside in. So we're going from the outside in. I don't think it would really make too much of a difference, but pretty impressive from the nine millimeter. All right, I moved the windshield over a couple inches. We got a fresh spot on there. And next up, we're gonna test the 40 Smith & Wesson. This is the caliber that a lot of police officers carry. Um, and it usually does pretty good at stuff like this. So this is the Glock 23. It's not a full-size gun, but this is the only 40 that I have that is slightly shorter than the full-size Glock 22. And for this one, we're gonna shoot the 175 grain Hornady Critical Duty. I think this is probably a better round for stuff like this than the Hydroshock Deep was out of the nine millimeter. So see if it does any better. All right, there's our entrance hole from the 40 Smith & Wesson. You can see much less shattering and spider webbing than the nine millimeter, which tells me it probably went through that a little bit easier. Go over to this side here, and you can see our bullet right there. This one completely stayed intact. I don't see anything that broke off of it. The wound cavity is also a little bit bigger, which you would expect. And this one stopped at about 13 inches into that ballistic shell. So a few more inches of penetration and overall probably better performance. Like I said, the critical duty is kind of designed for this stuff. So the nine millimeter critical duty would have probably done similar. All right, now we're moving up to the 45 ACP. This is a 230 grain federal punch 45 out of the Smith & Wesson MMP shield. Don't hate me. This is the only 45 that I have. I realize it's a short barrel. Definitely not 
a fair representation of the 45 compared to the nine millimeter and the 40 because it is a much shorter barrel, but I'm doing what I can. This is the only 45 I got, so. Plus a lot of people carry guns like this, so I'm curious to see how it does. This is definitely not the result I was expecting. So our 45 hit the windshield right there, just underneath our 40 Smith & Wesson. And you can see even less shattering than we had with the 40. So the nine was the worst, 40 was less, and the 45 was even less. And then over here, we can look at this ballistic shell. So the 45 is the one on the very bottom right here. And you can see all the way through that ballistic shell, where that bullet went all the way through and out the other side. I actually saw it hit the backstop behind our table here. And there's a couple reasons this could have happened. So the 45 naturally is a slower round than the nine and the 40. And then out of that shorter barrel, it's gonna be going even slower. So after it passed through that windshield, it could have slowed the bullet down so much that it didn't expand in the ballistics gel. I've tested the Federal Punch in the past and it does expand in bare gel, uh, but after going through that windshield, plus out of that shorter barrel, um, it might've just slowed the bullet down enough that it didn't expand at all, and that's why it penetrated all the way through the gel. But at least you got enough penetration. I'd rather have too much than not enough, so. Interesting result from the 45. All right, we're stepping up to the big boy calibers now. This is the 10 millimeter Glock 20. I wanna thank TurtleLegTactical.com for sending this gun out for us to play with, and I had a few different rounds that I could have tested out of this one but since we're doing hollow points I figured we would go ahead and test this one this is a 200 grain underwood hollow point I'm not exactly sure what it's called I just know it's 200 grains and it's really hot and the 10 millimeter is always impressive so let's see what it does man <laughs> it's a big step up from the 45 And there's our hole from the 10 millimeter right there. Pretty good spider web on that one. Not as bad as the nine millimeter, but definitely more than the other two that we shot. And then over here, we can see our ballistic shell. So the wound cavity from the 10 millimeter is that dark one right there underneath the 40. And you can see there's one bullet fragment right there. And then that's pretty much it. That 10 millimeter also went through that entire 16 inch gel block and out the other side so i know velocity was not an issue with that one because that's a super hot bullet coming out of a full-size gun but one other possibility that i didn't discuss with the 45 is that the hollow point cavities could be clogging up when they go through that windshield and filling with glass and basically turning it into a full metal jacket ball round and causing the bullet to not expand. So that could be what happened with the 10 millimeter, also could have been what happened with the 45. Uh, but like I said, I'd rather have too much penetration than too little. At least you know that it's going deep enough to do its job, so. Let's move on. All right, I flipped our windshield over. We got two calibers left and both of these are absolute hand cannons. So next up, we have the 44 Magnum. This is the Taurus Ultralight. 44 Magnum revolver, and the round that we're gonna test out of this one is the Hornady 225 grain FTX. This is a nasty little round. Typically in ballistics gel, it's hard to trap because it goes so wild and kind of all over the place, but we'll see what it does through our windshield. This is a painful gun to shoot. Please don't miss. Wow. <laughs> And there's our 44 Magnum. Not a lot of spider webbing, just clean straight through that windshield. And that is a big bullet hole. <laughs> if you look at the others, you can see how big that 44 Magnum really is. Let's go around to the backside and look at our ballistic shell. Whoa. Okay, so this is a first for sure. So here's where our 44 Magnum went in. Thank God I didn't miss that gel block. That one hit pretty low actually. Um, and you can see maybe there's a couple shards of glass in there, but not really a whole lot. And then about three inches in, it looks like it got rid of that red tip that was on that Hornady bullet. And then another five or six inches down, it shed the copper jacket entirely. So that is just the jacket that's around that bullet, actually in pretty good shape. And then another few inches down, you can see we actually have our lead bullet. So the lead went five inches, six inches further than the jacket did. And it's also 
completely intact. So that is the first time we've had that happen. I don't know, these bullets could be like unbonded or not bonded to the jacket. I didn't really look at the box to see, but either way, an impressive result and an interesting result. All right, this is the one that we've all been waiting for. Next up, we have the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. This is by far the biggest handgun that I own. It's an absolute cannon. And the round that we're gonna shoot out of this is a 350 grain Hornady hollow point. These were hand loaded, apparently really hot, um, and you feel it when you shoot them because this thing is absurd. So let's see if we can hit our ballistics gel <laughs> behind the windshield. I'm gonna try not to flinch, but it's pretty much impossible. That is ridiculous. That gun will put hair on your chest, let me tell you. Let's take a look at our bullet hole. So there it is from the 500 Magnum, pretty similar to the 44 Magnum, obviously bigger in diameter. And actually, now that I look at it, that's the first spider web like that that we've had. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a ton of like small little hairline fracture looking things, whereas this is just completely shattered. So that's definitely different. Interesting, obviously a humongous bullet hole. <laughs> Let's go around to the back side and we can look at our gel block here. All right, so the 500 Magnum actually hit in a similar spot to the 44, probably because I flinched and drove them both down. Um, but the 500 Magnum is easily the biggest wound cavity and the nastiest as well. So it's that dark one right there that you see along the bottom of the ballistic shell. And that is a humongous wound cavity. So the bullet actually continued all the way down the gel. We see one bullet fragment right here and that's it. The rest of that bullet exited our gel block and actually skimmed across my table and hit our backstop. So luckily this table is higher quality than the last one that I had because the last one was just breaking apart every time I shot stuff at it. But unfortunately we couldn't trap that 500 Magnum bullet. I really wanted to, but we will one day. We'll do some more tests and eventually get our hands on one fully expanded. But there you have it. If you were curious, a 500 Magnum is still plenty effective after going through a windshield. <laughs> like any of you thought it wouldn't be. <laughs> All right, everybody, there you have it. That is gonna conclude our first video on bullets versus a car windshield. Like I said, we will do more of these down the road. I actually have plenty of real estate left on this windshield, so we'll do rifles and other calibers. Just let me know down below what else you would like to see, but I thought it was only fitting to do pistols first, since that is typically what you see being shot through car windshields. Concealed carry, police duty, stuff like that. It's just typically handguns that are being shot through car doors and windshields and stuff like that. So that's why I did pistols today, uh, but we'll do more of these down the road, and I look forward to it. So as always, if you like the video, let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.